Hello and welcome to SourceCAD. When we make dimensions, we end up usually making them with respect to size of our main object and eventually we print it in different scales. The sizes of dimension changes in all the views, making it large in one and tiny in another. Now to fix this problem and to make dimensioning or even texts constant in size with respect to your sheet of paper, you can make them annotative. And in this video, we'll learn the step-by-step -step method of doing just that. But before we start, here is a Dimensioning Best Practices PDF ebook that contains more than 50 best practices related to mechanical and architectural drawing that you should follow to make your drawing look professional. Now download this free ebook using the link in the description. So with that, let's get started. Well, consider this situation. Here we have this simple floor plan with blocks, walls, dimension text, and so on. Now, in this case, this drawing is made on a scale of one is to one. So the real size of everything is shown here. So if this dimension shows 15 feet 5 inch, then the distance from this point to this point is actually 15.5 inch. So that's how this is made. Now, with respect to this, the size of dimension text and all these texts are quite big. If you want to check it, you can do that using di command. So di is for distance and press enter. And now I'll simply eyeball it and click here and then here. And as you can see, that distance is 8 inch. Now 8 inch is pretty big for text. And in this case, it just makes perfect sense because we need to make text that looks good on this kind of floor plan. But what will happen if we just go to layout and if we make several different viewports and then plot our drawing? For example, this one. Now here I'll go to layout 2. And in layout 2, we have, well, three different viewports. We have one is 200, one is 250, one is 20. Now we have scaled down our main drawing. And here we have a finite size of paper. Now this paper is NCB. So that's the NCB size. And of course, with this finite paper size, you need to scale down your really big drawing in order to fit it in your sheet. Now, since we have scaled it down, the size of text has also scaled down. So on a scale of 1 is to 100, it's very tiny. On a scale of 1 is to 20, it's quite big. And on a scale of 1 is to 50, it's somewhere in between both. So with respect to size of this object and all the floor plan things, the size of text and dimension is changing. Now, this is okay when you are plotting your drawing using model space or maybe if you're just plotting a single sheet, but it's not okay if you are plotting several different viewports of your drawing because the size is changing and in some of the cases it may not be visible and in other it may look really big. So consistency is required for size of text and dimensions. And that's something we can do with annotative property. So let's see how we can do it. So I'll go to model space and here all these dimensions are simple dimensions. The first thing that I'm going to do here is I'll create a dimension style which is annotative and for that I'll go to this annotation and expand it and select this dimension style. Now by default you will see that we already have an annotative dimension style. So if you don't want to create a new one just select annotative and we are good to go. So in this case I'll first select annotative and then I'll click on modify because we need to make some changes here as well. And the only change that I'm going to make here is arrow style. So I'll go to symbol and arrow and arrow style. I'll change that to architectural tick. Now there may be a few other things that I just want to check. If it is not right, I'll change it. For example, the size of text. Now the size of text is something that you should be very mindful of. Now it is set to one fourth of an inch and this is the size which will show on paper. Now this size is not with respect to your sheet, it's with respect to the layout. So on paper, the size will look exactly quarter inch high. And I think quarter inch high is just right. It's one of the standard sizes. So I'll keep that. So with that, we can click OK, but maybe let's decrease number of decimal places and the way dimension is displayed. So I'll go to primary unit and I'll change the unit format to architectural because, well, of course, we are using this in architectural drawing and a precision of 16th of an inch is not required. So half of an inch is just sufficient. Click OK or maybe quarter inch because we are using that big of a dimension size. So quarter inch and then click OK and close. So now that we have created annotative dimension style, 
it's time to make that as the current style. So from here, standard is selected, just make annotative as the current style. Now, any dimension that you'll add will use this style. So before we do that, I'll also change the layer and I'll make anode dim as the current layer because I want to put all my dimensions on this layer and let's start adding a few dimensions. So I'll go to linear, and the very first dimension that I'm gonna add, it will be here. Now it will automatically show you a prompt of scale. So on which scale you want to add it. Currently one is to one is the scale selected. So you can keep this scale selected or just select any other scale on which you want to show your drawing. Now I just want to select a scale of one is to 50, though we can change it later. But just to start with this, I'll change the scale to one is to 50, click okay. And now I'll add the very first dimension right about here and I'm going to overlap it over this existing dimension because later we'll just delete that one so again I'll just repeat the process and I'll add another dimension right about here and maybe another one right about here I'm not very precise with dimensions here I'm not selecting the starting and end point precisely the idea is just to add some dimensions for this annotative property to work so there we are and maybe another one right about here and another one right about here. Maybe one more dimension right here too. So we've got few dimensions here added. Now what about a few dimensions here in the bedroom? So it's right from here to here and then a dimension from here to here. We can also add a few dimensions right about here and just a few right about here. All right, so we've got few dimensions added. Now let's hide the normal dimension. So it's on dim layer. I'll hide it so that we only have annotative dimension in our drawing. Now in this case, if I hover my cursor over these dimensions, this annotative symbol will show up, which indicates that these dimensions are annotative. And now these dimensions are applied on a scale of one is to 50. So it's going to work only on this scale. But what if we have other viewports and we want to use it on other viewports in our drawing? Well, in that case, all you need to do is just change the scale. But before we do that, let's go to layout two. And right here, we have the dimension visible in one is to 50 scale. Now the dimension is only visible in this scale on a scale of one is to 50, because that's the scale on which it is applied. It's not showing up here on one is to 20 or one is to 100 scale. So that's one of the properties of this dimension style. It won't show up on any other scale. If you have created annotative style, it will only show up in the scale on which you have applied it. So to make it visible on every other scale, all we have got to do is well, apply these scales. So apart from one is to 50, we have a scale of one is to 100 and one is to 20. So let's go to model space and here activate this option right here, add scales. Now this was already active. This will just show the annotative objects. So just keep it active all the time. And then this one should be active when you are adding your drawing to other scale. So now go to this scale option and change that to one is to 20 because we had it. There we are. Now it may seem like the dimension size is decreasing here, but it is actually not here. The size of this entire drawing is increasing, thereby making these dimensions smaller. Now it may seem a bit counterintuitive, but don't worry. The idea is at the end of the day, you'll have equal size of dimension in viewports. So one is to 20 is done. One is to 50 is done. Now one is to 100. That's done. Now it may seem quite big, but that's again, totally fine. Once we go back to layout two, the dimensions will show up and not only it will show up, but also the size will be equal in every single viewport. But now with equal size, we have another problem. The dimension here is quite crowded and it's hard to see what's going on inside these drawings. Well, for that, you can actually move your dimensions inside these viewports and they're not going to affect other one. For example, here I'll double click inside this viewport and don't zoom in or out. Simply select the dimension and move it wherever you like. For example, I'll just move it out right about here. All right. Then we have this dimension. I'll just select this dimension and I'll move it out just like that. Here we are. Press escape. Now double click outside. And now if you zoom in, it will zoom the entire viewport. You'll notice that this has moved out. So is this, but these dimensions are inside this here. And here also it is just inside. Now, if I go to layout one here, also I have two different viewports. Now here we have one is to 50 scale. 
we have one is to 20 scale and in both of these scales the dimensions are added they are clearly visible so this is actually the real example of how the viewports will be made eventually so we are not going to end up with this kind of crowded viewport with several objects if the viewport is a smaller then definitely we'll include few objects and we'll have plenty of room for dimensions just like so so here even we have dimensions on two different scale they look exactly same because of annotative property and here also if i change the location of dimension in one of the viewports it's not going to affect the other one now another thing that i may want to fix here is the fractional value we don't need that precision for dimension so once again we can go to the dimension style modify and primary unit and from here we can just change that to the default value of 0 0 and just go out and now we have well clean dimensions here and maybe I'll just double click here and just move it somewhere else where it is at least clearly visible like so so you can then modify your dimension location just by moving it manually once you are done and that's the annotative property so that was all about the annotative dimensioning method if you haven't yet downloaded the dimensioning best practices ebook then once again check its link in the description and let me know in the comment section which of the listed best practices you found most useful. Take care and I'll see you soon in another video.